Coming up, Denise Minger dismantles Dr. T. Colin Campbell's The China Study. I'm Jimmy Moore, and this is the Live La Vida Low Carb Show. And welcome back to the Live on the Vita Low Carb Show with Jimmy Moore, episode 405. And I am so glad and happy to bring to you a wonderful interview with somebody who has been making quite uh, quite a scene lately in the past few months. If you've been around the blogosphere, the health blogosphere, uh, over the past few months during the summer, you will know the name Denise Minger quite well. Uh, she really came out of nowhere when she started writing about the China study and some of the flaws that she found from looking at the original original data. And so she started writing all of these exposés on what uh, author T. Colin Campbell wrote about in the China study, and people just responded. I mean, it, it really got her. It, it put a target on her back uh, by the vegans and the people that support the China study and, and consider it the holy grail of nutrition. But she says, you know what? It's not all that it's made out to be. And today she's here to talk about it, and I am so pleased to be able to uh, bump her up in the schedule and get her on today. But we'll have that in just a moment. And now without further delay, let's get into my interview with Denise Minger. Welcome back to the Live in La Vida Low Carb Show with Jimmy Moore. And today, by special request from so many of you, if you have not heard the name Denise Minger by now, over the past few months, she's pretty much made a name for herself uh, in the community that, that I hang around anyway. All the people are like, hey, have you read Denise Minger mangling uh, Dr. Campbell's China study book? And I'm like... Who is Denise Minger? I I don't even know who this chick is. And she's out there doing all these writings. But I started reading and I was like, wow, this is great. So I was like, you know what? We've got to get this girl on the show. And she is here today to tell us uh, all about herself and the great writings that she's done, uh, basically dismantling the China study. Denise, welcome to the show. Hi, Jimmy. Thank you for having me on. Well, who are you and why should we care? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just some person. <laughs> just, just some chick out the window. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, so tell us a little more about yourself. You have a uh, website called rawfoodssos.com, which we'll get into in just a moment. But Ooh. tell us your backstory. You have quite the interesting story about how you uh, were led to a raw foods diet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, when I was little, I had two fears. I was afraid of robots and I was afraid of choking. And when I was about seven, I almost choked on a piece of steak. And that really, really freaked me out. And because <laughs> you know what? What seven year old wants to die? So the, the whole meat texture thing became really scary to me. And I just, I stopped eating meat. And um, over the next few years, I learned more about the ethical and the, the health arguments for that. And I became one of those really diehard vegetarians. And um, at seven, at seven, <laughs> I, I started young. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, when I was about 11, I got very sick for about a year and I went from doctor to doctor to doctor. And they are all telling me different things like, oh, maybe you just have a flu that, oh, that's lasting, you know, 11 months. <laughs> and then someone else put me on a bunch of antibiotics, seeing if that would do anything. I went on tons of medication. No one could figure out what the heck was wrong with me. And I finally went to a natural path when I was, um, I think I was still 11. And she looked at me just for a second, and she was like, oh, you have a food allergy. And I guess it was because I looked horrible and had, like, the dark circles and the stringy hair, and I was, right. I don't know, just massively underweight. So she put me on an elimination diet where I couldn't eat anything except for rice and vegetables for a couple of days. And slowly but surely added foods back in one by one. And um, when I added wheat back in, I got terribly sick again. Mm. So that kind of nailed it for me. And um, ever since, I have not eaten wheat. And (laughs) I've not um, even wanted to because of that. So then when I was about... I think about 13, um, I started noticing that I was also reacting to dairy. So I had to whack dairy out of my diet too. And then when I was, um, I think I was about 15, I noticed every time I was eating soy, which is, of course, five times a day because I was vegan almost at that point, um, I noticed that I was feeling sick afterwards. So one day I went online and I typed in something like dangers of soy or something on Google. 
And one of the first, actually this is funny, one of the first pages that came up was something on the Weston A. Price Foundation site. And at the time, I was off in my little vegan la-la land, and I didn't have any idea who they were. You know, ignorance is bliss. So I clicked on this link, and it took me to a very long page delineating the dangers associated with soy, things like thyroid problems and that sort of thing. And so I read this, and by the end, I was like, wow, how come I've not heard any of this before? Who are these people? What is this foundation? What are they all about? What else can can they teach me? So I went to their homepage, and I I had no idea what to expect. And I I found some link on raw milk. And when I read raw milk, I was like, oh, it must be an FDA warning or something. Because, you know, you can't do it under raw milk. No, no, E. coli-filled bovine lactation, what? No. So I went to that link, and I realized they were promoting raw milk as yeah. something you should drink is beneficial. And at the time, I was so freaked out by animal products. Um, I read that and I was like, what? No, back button, back button, back button. I had to get out of there as fast as I could so I could go wash my poor vegan eyes out with water to cleanse them of the filth that I just read. It was awful. I was really horrified. So that was the first moment where I kind of had my, my vegetarian slash vegan reality collide with a different reality. Yeah. And it, I think it planted a seed, but at the time I just you know, like a good little ostrich, I buried my head in the sand and pretended I hadn't seen anything. So right after that, I, I ditched the soy and I became a raw vegan because honestly, at that point, it was either turn raw vegan or learn photosynthesis and live on sunlight because I couldn't eat anything. So um, I went raw vegan and first couple months of that were really good. I felt, felt great um, walking on sunshine. Next few months after that, I was walking on partly cloudy skies. It was a little iffy. Next few months, I was walking in a storm cloud of disaster. and I just had all these dental problems and went to the doctor again, got um, diagnosed with anemia, B12 deficiency, a lot of problems. And so that was when that happened. I was about 16 or 17. And um, I really kind of woke up from the vegan, the vegan dream. It, it stopped appealing to me turned into a nightmare. And um, so, yeah, when I was 16, 17, around there, I started looking into alternatives, and I ended up reintroducing animal products into my diet, which, lo and behold, made me healthier. (laughs) So at that point, um, I was completely disillusioned with the raw vegan movement, and I kind of isolated myself from it for a while because I don't know if you're you're familiar with um, raw veganism, but... I hate, I hate to comparing diets to cults, but this is one instance where it is scary how they censor information, yeah. how they will just give anyone the boot if they're having problems or if you're, if you're sincerely asking for help about some a health issue you're having while you're, that you um, encountered while on the diet. Right. You will be labeled a troll. You'll be labeled a whatever. You know, you'll get um, very much Ostracized. criticized. Ostracized. That's a good word, yes. And so... Part of the reason I started my website was because I was so sick of people um, having no place to really talk honestly about their experiences. Because anywhere you go that's vegan, moderated, um, it's just it's it's horrible. It's a dictatorship almost. It's there's just no place where you can be open about your experiences. So I made this website in hopes that I would help other people who had been raw vegan or trying to recover it from it, um, where they could find information that was accurate. So when that's my you, story. When did you create it? Um, January of this year, actually. Oh, so it's brand new. It is. It's very new. And, um, yeah, I spent about five or six years just completely removing myself from the raw vegan movement just because I was, I was really sickened by it. Yeah. But I eventually kind of came back and decided I wanted to help people. Yeah. Now, you're still a very young girl in your early 20s, right? Yes, that's what they tell me. <laughs> that's what they tell you. And, and, and so, I mean, you've got, uh, you know, all this history in your life. And, and it just amazes me as a child. You were like, a, hey, I'm raw, raw, vegan, vegetarian <laughs> at age seven. And it's like, what did your family think about that? Were, were they on board with you or was this just Denise being a rebel? <laughs> I'm an only child. <laughs> they knew I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it all. No. It does. It, it kind of does, actually. Well, yeah. I mean, I was, yeah, I just, I've always been kind of strange like that. I I, I never really fit in with my peer group, and I, I liked people who were older and 
um, that never really changed. So, <laughs> go awesome. figure.